I think that's enough preamble. Let's go ahead and model something. We're going to begin by talking about reference. I'm going to need to add some reference here to my workspace. If you've got a second monitor, uh, this is optional, but it's, it's a good thing to know how to do uh, in cases where you uh, want to have the reference as close to your work as possible. So what we're going to do is go to Texture, and then Import, and then you'll import this reference image, which I will make available somewhere obvious. Uh, if you're looking at my website, it'll be a little thumbnail that you can click on for a larger image, or if it's uh, on YouTube, then I'll go ahead and, and include the link. And if it's not available for some reason, then just try to find yourself a photo of an ear. Most likely you've got one attached to your head. So once you've imported it, we're going to go ahead and select the image here in the texture menu. And then you want to select this icon right here, which is going to add it to Spotlight, which is this tool that will allow us to position our reference here in our workspace. So there's a lot of stuff here. I don't use most of it, but the one thing that I use a lot is scale. So I don't really need to know too much about what's going on over here because it's essentially just the flat side of somebody's face. So I can kind of scoot it over. I want to make it big enough so that I can get a good read on what's going on. And then once I'm happy with the scale and the position, I can just tap the Z key. So now it is effectively dropped to the canvas and I can work over it or ignore it so long as I do something special with this little button right here, which I'll show you here momentarily. If I want to edit it for some reason, I can hit Z and basically just do whatever I want, change the scale, change the position. And then if I want to get rid of it, I can hit, I think it's uh, Shift Z. So Z brings it up, Z drops it, and Shift Z toggles the visibility. So there you go. All right, so we've got our geometry. I'm just going to grab for now a plane, click and drag, tap the T key to go into edit mode. You can see this is still a plain 3D, and I'm going to want to go ahead and convert it into a poly mesh 3D so that I can work on it. So when I do that, we'll switch over to the poly mesh version. We can see the PM 3D in front of it, and we're now back face calling, which is our dead giveaway that we're dealing with editable geometry. This currently is going to have a thousand polys. If I turn on the wireframe, we can see how that looks, and it should look all very familiar relative to the past couple of videos. I'm going to go ahead and turn on perspective. So it gets that perspective distortion as the uh, geometry is further away from the camera, it gets a little bit smaller, and as it gets closer, it gets larger, as we would expect with normal perspective distortion. Okay, so now we're going to talk about what the spotlight projection is going to do. If I grab my standard brush, and I have a spotlight active, and I try to sculpt, nothing is going to happen. And the reason is ZBrush has this behavior where it thinks if you've got a spotlight active that you only want to really work with the spotlight. So it's only the geometry that is underneath spotlight that will respond to your strokes. That is, uh, in my opinion, a little bit of a strange default behavior, but that's just how it is. So to disable it, you just have to turn off spotlight projection. And spotlight projection is in kind of a strange place. I think it might be in like brush. Uh, auto masking, I don't know, it's in here somewhere. It's it's samples, depth, whatever. It's, it's, it's and it, there you go, spotlight projection. So it's in samples. So it's a very unintuitive place to put something that will, you know, completely block your ability to work on the geometry, in my humble opinion. But hey, that's the way it is. All right, so anyway, that's why the spotlight projection is there and very useful. And if for some reason you're not using this UI, which should be linked in the description below, uh, you can go ahead and just disable it there. All right, so now we've got a plane here. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to sculpt this ear on this plane. So currently we've only got our few thousand polygons or whatever it is, a 1024, and that's just not going to give us a whole lot of resolution, but it's actually okay because we sort of want to start blocking stuff in at this lower subdivision level, at this very simple geometric level, because we want to make sure that we get that lift off the side of the head that an ear would naturally have. So there's a little bit of a, of a kind of a built-in challenge with this project that is related to the fact that we're working with geometry that is oriented in a grid, as opposed to something that might be more that where the, the edge flow was going in the direction that we actually want the geometry to go. 
So this is our first project together, so I'm, I'm going to keep it simple, but very, very shortly we'll introduce a workflow that'll make this a little bit less of a fight, but uh, we're just going to keep it keep it fairly basic for now. All right, so anyway, let me back up a little bit because I was kind of sculpting like a wild person there. So what I want to do is I want to make sure I don't get too close to the edge, right? Think of it kind of like a piece of paper in this case. So I'm just going to try to outline roughly what that shape will look like. I'm going to turn off my polyframe and I'm going to switch my material. The default red clay is okay, but there are some other ones that are a little bit better. And my preference here is custom out of four. A lot of people prefer these down here, basic material, totally fine. Whatever you want, uh, whatever's easy for your eyes to look at. But this one is kind of my favorite. So as I mentioned earlier, we want to, at this very crude subdivision level, we want to go ahead and just build in the big form. Like if you blur your eyes and just try to understand like what are the giant shapes here, you can always continue to refine. We're mostly just looking for the the big silhouette breakup, right? Like is this far enough off the head? Well, I don't have a side view, so I'm not sure. Also, I am using the shift key here. One thing worth mentioning about the shift key is if you've got a lot of geometry, the shift key, which has a default intensity of Z100, uh, sorry, the shift key. I'm saying that uh, the shift key. I mean the smooth brush. So the smooth brush is is, is uh, mapped to the shift key, and the smooth brush has a Z intensity of 100. You can absolutely modify that. And for geometry that's kind of simple like this, this is what happens with 100 strength smoothing, and this is what happens with whatever that is, 13, right? So you don't have to leave it at a Z intensity that's more than you need. But the reason I don't really love using the smooth brush, especially later on in a sculpt, is it tends to erode the sculpting in a way that I find to be counterproductive oftentimes. Like you sculpt something in and then you smooth it out and you sculpt it back and then you smooth it out. So you don't actually make a whole lot of progress. Whereas if you use the flatten brush, then you can you can begin to, to see some, some uh, positive results uh, over time. All right, so anyway, that's that's like an okay spot to be for the level of of detail that I can expect from a piece of geometry that's only got a thousand polygons. So you can either hit Control D or you can press the divide button. And now I've got my second subdivision, and now I should have about four thousand polygons because every individual polygon is now four polygons. And in this case, I, you almost always want to have SMT. This is the smooth modification per subdivision turned on. I guess there are some scenarios where you wouldn't, but it's pretty unusual. So now that I've got this, we can use our clay tubes brush and start kind of thinking about just looking at really just big forms here. My Z intensity is 49. That might be a bit much. Look at it, you know, look at it from all sides. The ear probably is further out from the head here, and then it might kind of tuck back in here, and then it's going to go out again here, and then sort of taper in. So we can use the move brush. And I don't have a side view, so what that means is there isn't necessarily a right answer, but probably something like that, you know, kind of a wedge with the, the, the upper area being the furthest out. That's probably good enough. So and we can see that I've got this lower area. So I'm holding Alt, which you can, I guess it doesn't update this, but Alt is going to be a, a negative. And we'll just kind of sculpt it down a little bit. Just looking for those very big silhouette -y kinds of things. All right, so looking for that kind of angle. This probably can come out a little more, so I'm using, this is all clay tubes. You can probably see which, which brush is highlighted. I've got a little something right there, I'm just gonna undo it. I, I like to try to keep that area clean for this kind of a demonstration if I can. And it looks like my proportions are probably not quite right. So in the last little minute here, and that's totally normal, they're never gonna be quite right until you've, you've had time to kind of polish it a bit. There we go. Okay, so in the next video, we're just going to continue on with this and see if we can get a little bit closer to the reference.